The New York City subway is one of the largest and oldest subway systems in the world. Over 6,400 trains run on more than 1,000 kilometers of track with almost 400 kilometers in network length. Iconic are especially the local and express tracks, which are quite unique in the world. With 472 stations, the network is larger than those of Paris, London and Berlin combined and the system transports over 1.7 billion passengers annually. But while many lines and transfer hubs in Manhattan are hidden underground, the true complexity of the subway is revealed above ground, where it floats over streets, through residential neighborhoods and looks like someone dropped a plate of spaghetti for the track layout. In Brooklyn, Queens and the Bronx in particular, we see the true engineering masterpieces. Elevated lines, often over 100 years old, carry trains across three, sometimes four levels, connecting up to six lines and bringing hundreds of thousands of people to their destinations every day. And all that despite wind, snow and rust. Hubs such as Broadway Junction, Jackson Heights, Queensboro Plaza or Coney Island are jaw-dropping and one of the most unique pieces of infrastructure on the planet. Multi-level platforms, intertwined viaducts, historic steel structures often in operation while undergoing renovation or expansion. In this video I'll show you five of the most spectacular and complex above-ground subway stations. Places where complex engineering, history and pure urban energy manifest themselves in steel and concrete. Broadway Junction is one of New York's most complex subway hubs and this is evident not only in its timetable but above all in its spectacular architectural structure. Several lines intersect here at completely different levels. While some trains run underground, others roll high above the streets of Brooklyn on enormous steel viaducts. The facility extends over several floors with six platforms, long walkways, deep stairs and sometimes unusually long walking distances between the individual lines. This complexity is no coincidence. Broadway Junction is the result of over 100 years of infrastructure history. Different routes were built at different times, by different operators and under different technical standards, without central planning but with ever-growing demand. The result is a hub that looks extremely chaotic and complex. Directly adjacent is a large depot, where trains are maintained and parked. The proximity to the yard explains the large number of additional tracks technical access roads and operational structures that further enhance the facility, both visually and functionally. Also striking are the numerous steel girders, ramps and bridge sections that appear to no longer have any function. Many of them are remnants of disused lines or unfinished connections, silent witnesses to an ambitious but often fragmented expansion system. In the middle of Manhattan, a subway station rises high above the street on a steel arch bridge over 30 meters high. The station on 125th Street in Harlem is a unique architectural and technical feature in the New York subway system. While most of the subway in Manhattan runs underground, an elevated solution had to be used here, not for aesthetic reasons but for geological ones. At this point, 125th Street crosses a natural valley known as the Manhattan Valley. The difference in elevation between the surrounding streets and the valley is so pronounced that building a tunnel here would have been extremely complex and expensive. Instead, at the end of the 19th century, engineers opted for a 
gigantic steel arch structure on which the station still rests today. The bridge itself is over 400 feet long, around 120 meters and supports not only the tracks but also the station's platforms and infrastructure. The decision to go with this solution was as pragmatic as it was spectacular. It allowed for an almost straight line without deep cuts or steep inclines and at the same time gave Harlem a striking technical landmark. Live pulsates around the station. 125th Street is Harlem's central business and cultural hub with theaters, colleges, small shops, markets and heavy pedestrian traffic. The station itself serves as an important access point to the Upper Manhattan community, connecting the neighborhood directly to Midtown and the Bronx. Queensboro Plaza is definitely not your typical subway station. High above the streets of Long Island City, two important lines meet, on two levels stacked one above the other, in a specially confined transportation hub. Unlike most stations, the platforms here do not run side by side, but are vertically offset. A solution that today appears almost sculptural, but at the time was above all one thing, practically necessary. At the beginning of the 20th century, there was an enormous shortage of space in the rapidly growing industrial and port area of Queens. At the same time, traffic from Manhattan had to be efficiently distributed eastward via the Queensboro Bridge, with as few intersections and bottlenecks as possible. The solution? A multi-level structure in which the two main directions of travel, into and out of the city, do not interfere, but run above each other. Trains from Manhattan arrive at Queensboro Plaza on the upper level, where passengers can change trains or continue their journey, while trains heading to Queens or back to Manhattan use the lower level. This design allowed for smooth transfers without complex crossings in the track field, an advantage that remains to this day. In addition, Queensboro Plaza was originally also an interface between two competing railway companies that wanted to share platforms but not necessarily technology or timetables. The stacked solution was therefore also a political and technical compromise. Today the station seems like a relic from a bygone era and at the same time a masterpiece of urban efficiency. The Smith 9th Street Station is something special. It is located at an altitude of almost 30 meters, making it the highest station in the entire New York subway system. Instead of running underground, the line runs on a huge steel viaduct that crosses the Governor's Canal. The reason for this is purely technical. When the line was built in the 1930s, the canal was still an important industrial and shipping route. A tunnel would have been extremely costly due to the soft contaminated soil and high groundwater levels. A bridge was therefore necessary and it had to be high enough to allow ships to pass the canal unhindered. The station was placed directly on the bridge, an unusual but efficient solution. Shortly after the canal, the line descends steeply and re-enters a tunnel as it continues north through dense residential development. Smith 9th Street is thus a technical compromise, an elevated route over the water and an immediate transition underground to adapt to the urban topography. The station itself is simple and functional, but a real highlight in terms of New York City subway infrastructure. The Coney Island Stillwell Avenue station is a superlative terminus. It is the largest above ground station in the entire New York subway system with eight tracks and huge hall roofs that remind one of some European main stations. The fact that so many lines converge here is due to its special location. Coney Island was already one of the city's most important destinations in the early 20th century. Beaches, amusement parks and promenades attract 
unexpected crowds. To cope with the influx of visitors, several lines from back then different subway companies led here. After the subway was unified, all these lines remained in place. To this day, they all terminate at Stillwell Avenue. The arrangement of the tracks is not entirely conventional. On one side, the lines are stacked on top of each other, instead of running side by side. There are practical reasons for this. In Coney Island, several lines from different directions converge in a relatively narrow corridor. In order to accommodate the necessary number of platforms and sidings without demolishing the entire neighborhood, some of the tracks were stacked on top of each other. This vertical solution saves space and still allows direct access to the large station concourse. Coney Island Stillwell Avenue is thus not only a terminus but also a symbol. It shows how the subway organized the leisure travel of millions and how engineering compromises created space for a monumental station on the edge of the Atlantic. Whether Broadway Junction, Queensboro Plaza or Coney Island, all these stations show that the New York subway is much more than just a means of transportation. It is a piece of city history and engineering artistry. Some solutions seem chaotic, others brilliant, but all tell of the challenges of keeping a metropolis on the move. And that is precisely what makes this infrastructure so fascinating. It's complex, uncompromising and uniquely New York. For more content on all different topics around cities and infrastructure, you can check out my other socials. You can find me on Insta for CS2 and TikTok for more of the topics we cover here. If you really liked the video, you could consider liking, hyping or subscribing to the channel. And I'm always happy to read your comments under the videos, of course. The best way to support the channel though is via my Patreon page. For just $1 a month, you get also exclusive access to all the CS2 stuff. Yes, I'm still playing the game. I want to thank everyone who already decided to support me there from the bottom of my heart. You're absolute legends guys. Thanks for watching, take care and bye bye.